Hey, I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions here with my uncut review of Superpowered, the DC Story, a three-episode miniseries documentary that's exclusive to the Max streaming service. The synopsis on IMDb reads, follows the DC's history and legacy, <laughs> highlighting the universe of characters and the iconic comic book company's origins and its evolution. Okay, so um, this is a bit of a different animal from what I normally review uh, because it's a documentary. So in terms of story and script and stuff, we're think I'm going to comment more on, I guess, pacing, the content itself. First, I should say I'm a lifelong DC fan um, and a returning reader av after about a seven to ten year break as of two years ago is when I got back in. Uh, I, l I also really love comic book documentaries about characters, about the history of companies, mostly DC. Um, now, this one is not as chronological a documentary as others that cover the same subject matter, such as the History Channel's uh, Comic Book Superheroes Unmasked or Secret Origin, the story of DC Comics. Chronology in this one is more of a, a touch point that it recurringly comes back to that it launches forward from or backward from while exploring how the comics changed and the different uh, major characters that DC is known for. There's lots of archival footage that I've never seen, um, which is, was really cool. There's great historical B-roll and other clips from periods being discussed that really helped put me into those time periods and gave me a sense of context. Uh, as I said, there's three episodes. The total runtime, they're each about 55 minutes, so like two hours and 45 minutes total. I watched it all in one sitting, and I was never bored. I was surprised when I realized, oh, it's three episodes, so I, I kind of have to watch all three. If it would have been like six, I could have justified watching just the first or whatever, you know. But I watched all three, never got bored. Um, it it uh, covered comic books in the majority, but it did have lengthy detours to explore adaptations to animation, film, TV, and games. Um, it also acknowledged missteps of the past, and not just the ones from, you know, like back in the 70s or whatever. Yeah, there was a lot of focus on, on those kinds of things, but even more recent ones were at least alluded to, like missteps of the New 52, uh, and how that wasn't really pleasing to all fans. They acknowledged even that currently there's a segment of fans who are not happy with the political content or uh, or maybe other elements. You know, they, they just kind of talk about how fans in general are a difficult bunch to please. So I appreciated that at the very least it didn't feel like propaganda for DC from front to back. I mean, certainly it was glowingly praising DC and playing up its significance, downplaying, you know, some of the flops and things like that. Um, well, not not all of them. It definitely acknowledges a number because they wanted to give a sense of drama. And I think it does that as you're following the story of DC and its ups and downs and stuff. But they, they side skirted a little bit how uh, DC really has been, you know, stomped on in the box office in terms of the the movies in recent years. They kind of sidestepped and talked about, you know, what they were achieving in the world of the Arrowverse and things like that. But but even so, they you know, they're not shying away from missteps, from things that people have reacted negatively to, so it's not universally glowing uh, and just feel like a big old piece of propaganda, and I really uh, did appreciate that. Um, as far as, well, normally I would talk about the cast and their performances, but there there's only one performer, really, that's Rosario Dawson. She is narrating um, the entire series, but a lot of it is great new and archival interviews with big-name DC writers, artists, publishers, uh, past and present, as well as actors and directors when they get into that kind of stuff. Um, and some interviews also go to really tender and emotional places for those being interviewed, and I appreciated seeing those as well. So, uh, yeah, I just appreciated all everyone's involvement and just kind of how they cut things together. As far as, like, the production quality, instead of talking about visual effects and stuff, w what do I think of the production quality? I mean, I think it's as solid a production as any documentary I've seen. Uh, sometimes, man, the, the, combo, the combo of, like, swelling music and animated comic art that they kind of repurpose and give a little bit of uh, life to... Um, and voiceovers of famous character quotes all are combined really cleverly and dramatically to at several moments make me just want to say yeah this is why i love comic books so uh really appreciated just the the, the production value on, on that end of things uh as far as themes is there anything of moral philosophical or spiritual significance in the themes of this thing that might trigger some thought 
Absolutely. A, a major focus is how comics reflect or react to the issues and values of the times they are written in. And so as they're taking us through the history of DC Comics, they're exploring, okay, at this time this was going on and the comics, the comics reacted to it in this way or commentated on it in this way. Um, comic book heroes are presented as characters who are meant as part of their function to show the world there's a better way and to point the way toward that better way. There are more times than I can count in the documentary where worldview issues are touched on and acknowledged to be significant elements in the storytelling, such as sexuality, violence, justice, and there's also a striking comment from Grant Morrison claiming that what we do, we as, as comic book writers, he says, uh, and creators, what we do with comic book characters makes us better creators than God. I mean, those more familiar with his work probably won't be surprised by that kind of statement, but <laughs> it was still striking to me. Um, of course, there are examples of, of how comic book writers make heroes point humanity toward what the writer thinks is a better way for humanity. Uh, so that always needs to be acknowledged. Paths for humanity that they would point to that I would say are actually harmful um, at times, but there can be little doubt, I think, after watching this documentary that DC Comics are constantly exploring and sometimes arguably preaching on many core issues related to human identity, morality, values, and purpose. I, I, I mean, more so than so many other types of entertainment and storytelling. Watching this documentary, I, I just kind of had, it wasn't the first time I think that it had occurred to me, but it still felt like a fresh aha moment. I just realized in a fresh way that my uh, ministry with Christian Geek Central, the content I produce, you know, reacting to different bits of entertainment and exploring their themes along the way, that's really the result of me first noticing themes popping out so strongly uh, in DC Comics, which I started noticing those things popping out when I was reading them in high school and then much more so into college and, and beyond that. Um, and so I'm just reminded by this documentary that I'm so glad I'm enjoying DC Comics again, that I'm making comics content about them every week. Uh, this documentary reminded me that uh, DC Comics are an emotionally, creatively, and philosophically fertile ground for the mind. Um, it's such, I mean, comics in general are such a powerful medium, and whether I agree or disagree with the values being presented by writers and editors, DC Comics is an immensely rich fictional environment in which the most moral, uh, important moral and philosophical issues of our day can and are, uh, can be and are explored. Um, and it's also the home to meaningful stories that make dramatic and emotional impact, um, both in just in terms of worthwhile things to think about, and for me as a nerd who likes crazy spectacle and wild ideas, you know. Uh, so I, I think that if you're already a DC fan, this is likely to remind you a number of things that you love about DC Comics, and I think it could also be something that you could show to someone um, who doesn't have their arms already folded, at least, uh, th th that there's another side to comics that actually is a much deeper and richer layer that they might not be aware of. Um, so uh, I have no idea where your tastes are in documentaries, but if I were a time traveler, I'd go back in time and say, Peter, don't miss this. It's going to be so much more enjoyable than you thought it was going to be. Definitely worth a one-month subscription to Max. Uh, you're probably going to want to buy this if and when it comes out on Blu-ray. It's rated TV-14 for, I guess, comic booky type stuff. <laughs> uh, if you want my ongoing reactions to the weekly releases from DC Comics, be sure to check out Essential Issues Monthly. It's a podcast, or you can watch that content in video form as Essential Issues Weekly at youtube.com slash Christian Geek Central, which coincides with the ultra-tier release schedule of the DC Universe Infinite subscription service. If you want to get that content on the standard-tier schedule, then follow Christian Geek Central on Twitter for weekly standard-tier content notifications at Christian underscore geek. And those are all of my thoughts for now on Super Powered, the DC story. As always, I'd love to get your thoughts and reactions in the comments below. Please like, share, subscribe, do all the things to stay connected, to share with others. Really appreciate that. I want to thank the Spirit Blade Insiders for uh, making this review possible. You can get info about the benefits of joining at patreon.com slash spiritbladeproductions. Then uh, I hope you check out our podcast and stay connected to all CGC content over at christiangeekcentral.com as we continue to geek out and seek the truth. For more chat about geek entertainment, answers to your questions, and news from the wider world of Christian geekery, get the Christian Geek Central podcast today on iTunes and other podcast services.